what's your vision about this in there, about the, for example, you know, the sea of media. We have so many hundreds of uh, satellite stations, of, uh, of television, whatever, around us, yes, in the Arabic language and in other languages, of course, which are becoming, you know, more and more international, broadcasting all, all around us. I mean, is there a way, you know, to, to, to approach this world? Well, I think, I think there is actually. Um, you know, we have a company that we created with uh, the former head of Sony, uh, Mickey Schulhoff, which is basically licensing all the content from the large studios in Hollywood and offering that as part of a web conversation, a mobile conversation license um, with, with pri premier American content. But we're talking about other markets as well. Obviously, the French market is somewhat of a special market. Bollywood is somewhat of a special market, and guess what? India. And guess what? The Arab market is a special market as well. I mean, there's, there's a bunch of Arab films, and there's a bunch of things to do. And right now, this little company, which is uh, still fighting for its position in the world, uh, uh, is really interested in, uh, you know, and, and Jerusalem has this advantage that you don't have to, you know, the, the Arab population is here, the Jewish population is here. And, and so one of the initiatives that we're talking about is doing it for the Arab world with licensed content to that world. It's not always easy. And, and uh, because it needs to be legitimate. And, and one of the things is that not every venture that you do is legitimate. Um, but I think that maybe the high-tech industry in Israel could be a little bit of a simile to what could happen in the peace process. If you look at how business was done in Israel up until the high-tech era, it was primarily done with government control um, in a little bit of a Bolshevik way because including my grandfather, they came from Russia, and you know, we were influenced by the Russian Revolution. Our forefathers were not uh, um, liberals like, and capitalists like uh, you know, Jefferson and, and, and some of the other guys in the US. And, and it was important, but I think that we, we introduced a new language in the business which stated a few things. One, we are international. We are open to cooperation. Two, we don't you know, we're entrepreneurial. We can create something out of nothing. Uh, three, we do things quickly. And I think that, and, and, uh, and, and we did create a big technology hub here. And I think that, you know, in the, in the last 20 years, in the next 20 years, Israel, because it's caught, you know, India's catching up and, and China is catching up, we just stick with technology. And we need to define our leadership proposition in a different way. And that leadership proposition is creativity. It's not just about technology. If you look at La Hakat Bacheva, Bacheva Dance Company, they're not technology, they're leaders in the world. If you look at the film industry in Israel, we have some people here. I mean, it is, it is strong, it is interesting. Yes, but for this purpose you but, mean... But just, just oh, let me, sure. so, so, so I think the thing is, is to define our position broader. And I think that the same thing will happen with leadership. Yes, but what, what, there's, there's a new breed of leadership I think that will come into the political scene in Israel as well because you cannot have a people. I don't think there was ever in Israel a situation there were so many creative people on the profit and non-profit side in every place you look with no central interesting narrative. I mean I've never seen a you know we are a country which on the broad sense it's very important to be pessimistic. But on, in our own four walls, and everything that every one of you know, probably these people do here, people think they can change the world. And something about this entrepreneurialism, and something about this openness, and something about the idea that when you do a venture deal, you first of all put the term sheet, and then you negotiate the details, needs to come to the political realm. And I think a lot of us Israelis have had it with, um, people that are very talented, but are not moving. And I'm not saying it's easy to move in the Middle East, but we can sure try. But this was a great my question. I mean, how do you get into and influence the political reality? Because the people who do politics in Israel are the politicians. I think that- They are um, regulators, they are politicians, I, they are I think, officials. You know, talking the about clubs. the media and talking about different initiatives, I think that, that a lot of people are influence, influencing different areas including education, including the galley, including the negative, including Jerusalem, including uh, poverty, including, you know, not accepting the government, not accepting 
the government standard of doing something about it. So, you know, this could expand. What do you say, Ben? You, you're talking about uh, also interesting the government in doing also the kinds of things that you are doing. I mean, you know, internet sites. I mean, Obama's revolution, you know, and Obama presidency is, you know, thanks to the new media in America. He absolutely tapped into and utilized um, the new media in a way that the new media wasn't available to be utilized the way he utilized it in previous campaigns, but he tapped into it in a way his opposition couldn't even touch. And I think you can do that. I, I like what Maurice was saying, but you can't call it a brand, you can't call it a product, because it's, it's, it's totally different than that. But you absolutely can talk about the narrative of, of what is going on there. And it's so important uh, to make sure the person on the street understands that narrative. Because to me, as I look at it and read about it, I'm always shocked about the disconnect. And I see that disconnect even among you know, Jews in LA who don't see uh, you know, the reality of what's going on or the fact that as I enter this country and I go and meet, I'm very you know, lucky, I have a VIP guest, so I got to go through a different door, I guess. But, you know, and the woman stamping my passport says to me, do you want me to stamp your passport or do you not want me to stamp your passport? Because if I stamp your passport, you can't go to these seven countries. And before I, now on the other side, and I'm a peace-loving boy here, you know, you know, conditions of entry and declaration of uh, starting point, and I, I, I'm not even allowed into your country with your stamp, you know, you're not allowed into my country unless you go through my roadblock. You know, I, th those, are, those are so paramount, and that's not out there. You know, and that narrative of the reality of that little moment doesn't play out. No one knows that. You know, no one sees that. It's not until you arrive or that you've read your guidebook, they're even aware that there are, and the, you know, the fact that, you know, we have given a uh, platform to a Mechijan you know, to say things like, I want to destroy you know, this country. And if we even you know, somehow say, I do, we have to lead with the violin. We have to get back to that. We have to figure out a way again um, you know, to get the true stories out there. And, um, and we've wrapped ourselves in the shield and the, and the bayonet, but we have to you know, wrap ourselves in the doves and the violin again. And, uh, and I don't know how to, how to drive that. I, I have nothing to do with politics. All I know is how to tell a good story and to, you know, to make people connect with the emotional piece of that story. And I think there's an emotional, powerful narrative of Israel that isn't out there. And every time I look around the world and see the people speaking up for or representing Israel in any of those platforms, they're not delivering on the methodology of anyone in this room. And, th and that's a place, uh, you know, I think all people from all fields like ours could help address influence and, uh, and potentially engage. And it's exactly why I'm here today and, fl and flew in uh, to be here. Uh, we need also to change our own story, our own, own narrative, the Israeli narrative. Well, I think a lot, a lot of the pieces of the narrative are already here. And I think that um, I'm a big believer in leaders as entrepreneurs. Often you, you, you ask, what is a great leader? A great leader is like an entrepreneur that repositions the product in the market for his own people or her own people. We're thinking about Elizabeth I. <laughs> So I think that a lot of the ingredients in Israel exist. We are probably the most exciting country in terms of being able to create initiatives and companies, economic initiatives. I mean, people are talking about the division between the rich and the poor in Israel, but I've never seen a country where people who have made it care about the other side of the street and have compassion like we have here, and I've never seen so many initiatives that are that almost all my business partners and friends are involved with. So I think that a lot of the things exist. I think that uh, in Jerusalem, I have to tell you, you know, with a few Palestinian business leaders and with a few Arab uh, business leaders and Israelis, 
for us to do a few things, just a business venture, and let it be you know, successful more or less, I think it has so much power in terms of signifying to others what can be done. Not because we're going to change the world with our little company. Maybe we will. It happens once in a while. But because that in this place, especially in a place like Jerusalem, and I always will sell Jerusalem, it's, um, you know, it's the only place where naturally the, wrote the clash of civilization and foresaw what happened in 9-11. Well, in this place, in Jerusalem, civilizations could heal. And I think it has a major effect with a small venture. It could be a show, it could be a little high-tech company, it could be a business park that we're creating in the center of town. Whatever it is, I think that it needs to show the political leaders that you know there's a way, if there's a will. So anyway, I'm optimistic. It is, um, but I, I see the clock going. But uh, yes. before I pitch myself, I've heard Jerusalem pitch. I've heard uh, the new book pitch. I'm buying it right now. Um, uh, 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 exactly. Uh, uh, but um, uh, you can just make, do, uh, put your new business in Jerusalem. Exactly. Yeah, that's the next thing. But I do think we can all shine a light, you know, and, that, and that's you know what I, what I'm trying to do every day, everywhere I go, and I'm in media because I want to be able to reach millions and millions of people through great stories that maybe do something beyond the narrative that exists within those stories. And I think that's something we can all do. Thank you very much.